I'm going to walk you through creating a blackout comms cluster. Blackout comms is a system for encrypted messaging, location sharing that does not rely on cell networks, internet, or any grid-based infrastructure. Instead, it uses radio frequencies, meshing, and other off-grid techniques. So a cluster is what I'm setting up now. And a cluster is a group of trusted devices that can privately communicate and work together as a private mesh network. These are brand new devices that I'm going to set up as a private cluster now. They've all been flashed with the latest Blackout Comms firmware. That's pretty easy to do. There'll be another video for that. Each one has an empty compatible SD card. These are the SD cards I use, uh, but, but there are, there's other ones that are compatible as well, so check the uh, website. I don't know if they're all charged, so I'm, that's why I have them plugged in. So I've got a TDEC Plus from Lilygo, and I've got a TDEC Complete from Rockland. I've got the Lilygo Pager, and I've got this uh, T-Beam Supreme, also from uh, Lilygo. These are going to be communicators, so obviously they've got keyboards. These are for sending messages and viewing location and other people's location and things like that. These are for people to use. This is going to be a link or node, which means it's just going to be sitting in the background running 24-7, making the whole cluster work better. I probably would replace this with an antenna that's on the roof or, or something like that. The first thing I'll need to do is choose which device do I want to be the root. The trusted group of devices, the cluster, has one root. That root is kind of like the admin, the top device in the, the group. And only the root can add new devices to this private cluster. So it's, it's kind of an important one. I'm going to choose to make the Rockland one the root. The only limitation there, it cannot be a node or link. It has to be something you, you can actually interact with. So I'm going to make it the Rockland. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set this one up first. One other note, um, when you're setting up a cluster, if you're going to have a node in it or a link, these things, once they've been flashed with the firmware, they are going to immediately boot up into onboard mode, which means they're going to be trying to jump to the front of the line of getting onboarded. And onboarding is what I'm going to do to these one at a time. So I'm leaving this powered off. I'm going to do this one last, but it needs to be powered off. So the screen is blank. I know it's not running. I'm just going to set that one aside for now. I'll get to that last. First, I will set up the device I chose as the root. So I go through some of these simple questions, my time zone, daylight savings time, and I have to give the device a name. I usually would use my own name or the name of whoever's getting the device. I will just call this one Rockland. This is gonna be a private cluster. There is a different type that's less restrictive, but I'm not gonna use that. I want a private cluster, so I choose private. This one is gonna be the root like I mentioned, so I choose root. Now I need to name the cluster. The, this is kind of like your Wi-Fi network name or something like that. Some people like to use home, I use my last name. This part of the setup, I only have to do on a root. All the other ones will get this automatic. I'm gonna choose to call it home, the name of the cluster. So I named this device Rockland. The cluster is gonna be called home. In the USA, you would choose 915 here. All the defaults are okay. The cluster hops around frequencies so it doesn't sit on the same one. You would choose the center. You can leave the default if you want. How many channels will it hop across? 64 is the default. It's a pretty good choice. You can do less. You could actually have it sit on just one frequency, but that may not be a good idea. I always choose 64 which is the default. And how often should your cluster hop to another frequency? I leave at 100 seconds. So that's it. This thing is going to save the settings, reboot. Okay, so now I have a cluster with one device in it. This device name, like I mentioned, is Rockland. The cluster is home. The crown means this is, this is the root device. If I want to have more than three devices in my cluster, I need to get a license. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to do that off camera but I touched the little icon right there. And when I touch that, it's gonna give me a link where I can purchase that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and then I'll set up the rest of the devices. 
So I have set up my license so this root device, Rockland at home, is ready to onboard as many devices as I want, up to uh, 89 other devices. The second one I'll go ahead and do is the pager. I don't have to choose very many things. The time zone, daylight savings, name the device. I'm just going to call it pager. This is going to be a private cluster because it's joining this existing one and it's a standard communicator, not the root. So that's all there is to that. While that's rebooting, I'll go ahead and set up the Kinect Plus. Okay, so time zone, daylight savings time. I'm gonna name this one TD Plus. It's gonna be joining the private cluster and it's not gonna be root, it's gonna be standard. That one's set up. Now I can see the pager is ready to onboard. Onboarding means this root accepting it into the cluster. So what I'm going to do is tell the root device to go into onboard another device. So I'll touch settings, choose cluster, onboard a device. I'll go ahead and get that started. So it's waiting for a device to onboard. The pager, I'm going to go into settings, push C to flip through the categories. There's cluster and I'm going to choose join cluster. So now this one is ready to accept another device. This one is trying to join and they will pair up here. It should take a minute or two. Once in a while it will get stuck and you may have to restart the devices and tell them to onboard again. That doesn't hurt anything. What they're doing is this device is sending all of the settings to this one and some other information about the cluster that it's going to need. It may look like nothing's happening for a few seconds. Just leave them alone and let them go. Okay. So that's it. They should restart. Um, once they restart, uh, and now instead of this thing having a cluster just of itself, it has a cluster of two devices. And what I should see is their antenna signal should go green because they should see another device now. There, that one's got it, and so does that one. I can look at the neighbors. This one sees the pager. Here I can look at the neighbors. This one sees Rockland, so they are ready to go. All right, so next I'm going to onboard the T-Deck Plus. You can see it's ready to onboard as well. I'm gonna go back into here into settings again, cluster, onboard another device. And the T-Deck Plus, I'm going to choose cluster join. There, this can take a few minutes. These switch to a different set of frequencies while they're doing this, so the pager's just kind of ignoring it. All the exchanges they're doing are encrypted asymmetrically, so any of the frequency information or symmetric keys or things like that, it's all encrypted. Okay, so again, restart, and once this device reboots, it's got everything it needs to be part of the cluster, and now I have a cluster of three devices. This pager is not yet aware of this one. They've never met. <laughs> so automatically, it can take a few minutes, it can take an hour. They will automatically exchange trust information with one another. But until then, if you went in to look at neighbors, what you might see is unidentified. That should automatically get fixed. But if I am in a hurry, then what I can do is go into settings on the unknown device, choose cluster, and broadcast my identity. So that's forcing the exchange, which will happen automatically, so I don't have to do that, but if I'm in a hurry, I can do that. And you can see it sent its information, and now it knows that's TD+. Lastly, the node here, or link. I'm gonna go ahead and onboard that. This thing is gonna run 24 seven. I don't know how much battery it has, so I, I'm gonna plug it in as well. It may come on as soon as I plug it in, yeah. What I can see is, I know it's hard to see on this camera, it's gonna start up and it's gonna say onboard connecting. And it's on frequency 911.1. And it will just sit there until it gets onboarded. On the root device, again, same thing. I'm gonna choose onboard. Notice I didn't have to do any setup on this device. I just installed the firmware, put an SD card in, turned it on, it's ready to join. And again, you can't see on the camera, but I can see all the steps. It's exchanging its trust information and frequencies. It, they are both restarting, which means it has successfully joined. And so we have a situation again where 
It's all a cluster now, a cluster of four. These two have not yet met this device, and that would automatically happen. But it, while that's going on, it may look like things aren't working very well. So rather than waiting, this time I'm going to have the root device broadcast its identity to everyone so that just to force it and not wait for the for it to automatically happen what I do is go into the devices screen here this one I can tell on the front of it it's named n58655 links or nodes will have these weird looking names that were automatically assigned starting like n dot t dot I know that's a link or node so what I'll do is choose that one and I touch the handshake button what's happening now is that the root device is broadcasting identity see it went out to see if both of these got it because sometimes it takes more than one one try I'm going to go at the look at the neighbors on T deck plus so it sees pager and Rockland there it sees n 58655 uh, and let's see if the pager got it as well. Yep, it did. So we have a happy cluster now. And just to check, I should be able to broadcast a message and everyone should get it. So I'm going to go ahead and try that now. So on the TDEC Plus, what I'm going to do is send a message. It's going to be a broadcast. Hello. Okay, so the uh, Rockland got it, TDEC Plus got it. You can't see it, sorry. It, as it rotates through its screens, it should show hello. Yep, there it is. So it got the message as well. So there's a trust between them all, it's private. Um, I actually have two other clusters in the house running right now and there's no interference, they're all private. If I wanted to add any new devices later on, let's say sometime I want to add this uh, full screen device, no problem. I can just flash the firmware, get this thing set up, the time zone and a name, in, and then use the root to choose onboard, and then on this one choose join. And then it will become part of the cluster and all the other devices will learn about it. So that is setting up a cluster.